Pregame.com. Friday night, let the madness begin. I'm Marco D'Angelo. I'm here with Vegas Runner. We're going to break down a couple Friday night games for you on the big dance. It's here. This is what we've been waiting for. We're ready How Friday. How excited are you? Seriously, you know? like, aren't you already feeling it? <laughs> Driving up here, bro, I swear to you, I was like, this is fucking great. <laughs> Well, B and I was up here yesterday doing videos. I had a Philly yesterday, so today's the second day. It's now it's a job. I hear you. <laughs> but I've been, you know, been breaking this stuff down, you know, ever since the brackets came out on Sunday. Working the games, doing videos, podcasts. You did a podcast today. Um, we're going to look at Alabama Creighton. Uh, this is an eight nine matchup. Uh, those are generally the most intriguing because oh, it's eight nine. It's a coin flip, yeah. you know. And you've the line's got, always near pick them. You know, sometimes you have, you know, Vegas on one side. Uh, the the, the committee, tournament committee yeah, on the you other. Know, you know, with the 8-9. So we've got the 8-9 matchup here. Uh, the line is Alabama minus one and a half. So right off the bat, this is one where Vegas is telling you. The nine the committee, better. Yeah, committee, you made a mistake. This, sh this should be flip-flopped. Are you buying it? I really am. I think this is one of those games that's going to be a, a play a major role in people's brackets. Because if you have Creighton, you believe that this team's for real, and you probably have them playing spoiler further. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think this is one of those bracket buster games um, for people. I, I think the right team is favored. I really like Alabama. There's a couple main reasons, none bigger than the layoff factor. You got to look at when's the last time a team played. And Creighton, the last time they played was March the 4th. Yeah. So here they are. They've won their conference tournament. They're riding high. They went in hot. They're a 28-5 and five team. And now all of a sudden, they got to sit back and wait almost two weeks yeah. to play their next game. I think that's the worst scenario for a team like Creighton, a mid-major team. You want a team coming in there hot and rolling. Alabama, on the flip side, they're a team that didn't get too much love through the season. I mean, when you're talking football, you put Alabama at the top. But when you're talking basketball, they're in the middle of the pack in the SEC. You know, you're talking Kentucky, Florida. Alabama is usually an afterthought. So I, I don't think as far as the betting public's concerned, this team's going to get any respect. But when you look at strength of schedule, this is like two different sides of the coin. Creighton had a pretty easy strength of schedule, and they didn't even have a challenge in non-conference, where some of these mid-major teams that know they're going to have a weak schedule, at least they schedule tough non-conference games. Creighton didn't do that this year. That's why they're 28-5. They're and five. Alabama, on the flip side, they had the 29th toughest schedule in college basketball and the 50th toughest non-conference. So they played a tough slate of games, and they finished 21-11. and 11. I think this team's the real deal. Well, I'm on the fence with this game, and the one thing that's keeping me on the fence is the point that you brought up. That, that was the biggest part of my note. I tend to lean to Creighton in this game. I think they're the more consistent club. Yeah. Alabama, you know, they're 21-11, but this has been a bad point spread team. Uh, so many times they were bad laying points. They would just win and get by. Plus, they had some suspensions during the season, uh, you know, and different things, distractions that didn't help matters. But Creighton, that layoff, it's either going to do one of two things. You know, they're either going to have fresher legs. Now, Alabama has the benefit of they didn't go the distance. Right, in, right. You know, in the SEC tournament, which is a big factor in my handicapping looking, you know, a lot of times it's one thing to have momentum, and that is a plus. You know, you, you like to have a team on a roll, but sometimes if a team uses so much energy to, to get Especially that... Especially an underdog. Alabama winning the SEC tournament would have been a huge accomplishment. It would right. have surpassed the season goal. Right, you know? which, you know, was a video I did yesterday with Steven Nover where I liked UNLV over Colorado because Colorado winning the Pac-12 in their first year in that conference was huge to that team, and I think that they're going to have a little bit of an, you know, a letdown in their next game. That's not the case with Alabama. Creighton rolled, and Creighton's been a good team to me, um, you know, not in the championship game, but in the semifinal. I used them as my, as my college game of the year, and they treated me very well. So they crushed, I got, they I crushed. Got, I got a soft spot for Unlike them. Unlike Baylor. But I'm worried about the layoff. I think they come out 
a little bit flat and rusty. You know, it, you can practice all you want, but it's not game no speed. No way, no way. And in these games, and especially in an 8-9 matchup like this where the odds maker's telling us this is a coin flip, it's a one and a half point game. The committee's saying it's a coin flip basically because it's an 8-9 seed. If you come out and you're cold at the beginning and Alabama gets off to a fast start, that's a huge advantage for Alabama for Creighton to come back. So that's my concern. It's probably a game I'm not going to end up playing on Friday, and that's the main reason for it. The one thing that the concern that I do have with Alabama is we've said they've been an up-and-down team, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, and they go the way they shoot the basketball, yeah, yeah. which so many teams do. But my problem is in their last 12 games, they shot less than 41% for the game in six of their last 12 games. That's 50% of their games. They had bad shooting rates. Right. So if they come out with a bad shooting start and Creighton comes out a little bit flat, then maybe Creighton doesn't fall behind. And then once they get their sea legs, so to speak, you know, it could be a tussle. But I'm on the fence with this one. I'm going to let you have the, this is your pick. You go ahead and bring it home for Bottom us. Bottom line, I just think when it comes tournament time, Early on, I prefer defense over offense when they've had a little layoff because as the tournament goes on, Sweet 16, Elite 8, Final Four, I'll look to offense because if a team gets on the roll and they're hitting baskets, right. you can't stop them. But like this game where they've had off for a while, it's been almost a week, you look at Creighton, over 30% of their points come from the three-point line. So they have to shoot from the three-point line to have success. Alabama is one of the better defensive teams in the country. I think Pomeroy has them top 10 defensive efficiency. So you have a defensive team going up against an off, a team that's offensive, but now has been off for a while. In that case, I think it, it lines up well for Alabama, even though I agree with you 100%. They haven't been shooting lights out. But again, this is starting a whole new season now. And finally, Alabama is a much slower tempo team. And I think in the tournament, a team that's lo slow tempo has an advantage because it's so much harder to force someone to run with you mm -hmm. than it is to slow the game down. You could run all you want. If I'm going to walk it up and take 35 mm -hmm. seconds off the clock, right. you can't do much about it. But it it's tough to get someone to force you into running. That, that both teams exactly. Will get. So I, I got to go with Alabama <laughs> here. I think the market is right the way they're pushing this line. I think the books will end up getting balanced because Creighton, when they look at that record, they look at the better seating, they look at their road record. I think they'll get enough play from the betting public that the books won't be too exposed on this one. I got to go with Bama. Well, you know, I, like I said, I can't disagree you know, with you. Uh, I'm going to be on the fence with it. One thing I will say in, in your favor is when it comes down to it, I found over the years, and I don't have numbers to you know, back it, this is just 30 years of memory, when it's the committee and it's the Vegas books, I, I got my money with the boys with, uh, with the around Vegas, the corner. With yeah. the Vegas books yeah. because they're doing it. They're putting their money up. They're, 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 they're taking a position where it's going to cut their mistakes. Their opinion costs cut. money. The right. committee, they yeah. just piss people off. Like you Washington. Know, yeah, they just <laughs> make people mad. But, but here, if you're going to make a 10 seed favorite mm -hmm. over a 7 speed seed, yeah. you better be pretty damn right that that 10 seed is as good as you think they are. Absolutely. All right, so Vegas Runner says to take Alabama on Friday over Creighton. I'm on the fence on this one. One, but I'm not going to be on the fence when we come back with the next video. We're going to take a look at St. Bonaventure and Florida State. Both I'm, conference champions. Both con I'm going to actually talk out of both sides of my mouth, and you're going to think I'm crazy, and then I'm going to give you my pick. Can't we'll wait. be right back.